So, so I'd like to reacquaint us with this model that we built up yesterday in this event. Um, so we have a, uh, a population which is circulating in an environment which uh, involves community places, schools, workplaces, homes, and persons. Um, this is an abstract space, um, and each person's evolution is governed by two state charts, a mobility state chart, which guides them between different places in their day-to-day -day life space, um, going from home to either work or school, to community places and back to home. And then they also have um, uh, bouts of asthma that are being encountered. And these bouts of asthma are uh, are triggered by aspects of their context, and particularly by uh, some overall risk and some um, temperature and some air quality related uh, risk. Um, thank you, Nona. Appreciate it. Um, now, uh, currently, this was running in an abstract space. So by that, I mean it's not geographically situated. It is spatial. It is in a space. But it's not um, it's not a geographic one, uh, and uh, if we look at it, we'll see it just um, these different resources spread out, and as we said, people uh, move between them in the course of the day. Uh, so um, people will be moving shortly to their uh, work uh, or school commitments, and moving on. So all this is situated in a uh, uh, in an abstract space, and I want to remind us that homes are in blue, uh, the uh, workplaces are in red, the uh, schools are are in yellow, and the uh, community places here are in uh, are, are in green. We're going to retain that iconography, and our goal is to take this model and to introduce geographic data to it, to situate it instead in our fair city. Sounds good here. Um, here, so that we can uh, we can put in place a, uh, a set of geographic information that may be valuable uh, and more situated. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna make some choices. And amongst other things, we're going to be operating in a very particular environment, Saskatoon, uh, geographically, but we're going to need to choose which of these resources that I've listed, schools, homes, workplaces, et cetera, are geographically based and which are, in fact, just chosen to lie within the city. And um, uh, for simplicity and, 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 and um, ease, I'm going to choose one of those um, that will be geographically based, namely schools. Okay, so um, I'd like to make sure everyone has recourse to this model. Um, if you don't, make sure it's downloaded from the uh, uh, from the course site uh, where we've been putting said models. Um, uh, here we go, and and it's under the uh, under the models built in class. Right, um, this is the final one of them from yesterday. Okay, so my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save it to version seven, and I'm going to say with GIS, okay, um, which is going to indicate something about it. Uh, it uh, having now been supplemented by GIS. Okay, now we're going to need to adapt this, and the good news here is good and bad. News. The good news is that the adaptation will be um, localized and it will give you very much a flavor of the essential elements for putting together a GIS model in any level. There's some downsides. The downside is since we're not building this from scratch, um, uh, you're gonna have to make note of how I'm changing the model um, when you think about what it would be like to build it up entirely from scratch. A lot of the steps are exactly the same. Some of them will involve weaving elements into an existing model in a way that would instead be building it up from scratch. But 
Um, I hope you'll bear with that. Okay. So the first thing I'd like to do here is to, um, we're going to add a, an element that's going to be storing our geographic information. We're going to add to every one of a set of community resources that we're going to situate within the geographic space, but we're not going to draw information directly from the GIS database for it. Uh, for, for those for which we're not drawing data directly from the GIS database to place it, we're going to introduce what's called a location. So if you go to community place, that'll be the first of them. We're going to add in here a parameter called location, okay? And we're gonna be doing something similar for a set of the others, but let's do this one first. So we're gonna drag in a location. It's type is going to be none of the, the built-in ones here. It's going to be other, okay? And particularly, it's going to be a, and we're going to type in for other, we type in over here, point, with a capital P. Reminder, Java is case sensitive, so it matters that it's capital. Okay. This is going to be the GIS point here. Okay. Oh, zoom in. Sure. Great. Thanks for the reminder. Is this enough? Or do you want a bit more? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to now copy this. So I can right click on it and do copy or I can do control C on it. On Mac, it would be mumble C. Command C. Command C. Okay, thank you. And you probably have you prefer not to do that in any logic because when you when you control or command you feel it goes somewhere. Okay. I kind of like it. Oh really? Yeah, I, I do it all the time. So um I I've found it sometimes puts it it does, but in this model, there's so little for most of these resources I'm putting it in, it's really obvious. All right. There's only like, so we're going to go from community place to home, double click on home. Really, there's, it's it's so empty. I know what you mean, Wade, when it's like full of stuff, it's a giant pain to find it. And it's better to go find where it is over here. But here, if you double click on home, I'm now going to paste here. I'm, I'm clicking on it to make sure it goes in and then I because it's so empty I can see where it goes and that just makes it uh, quicker I don't have to redefine it I'm also going to do this for a workplace but not this is important I'm not going to do it for the school it's not necessary because I'm going to draw that directly from the database so I'm doing it for workplace okay and I'm clicking here, and then I'm doing it. And you can see, as Wade said, it puts it in sort of weird places, but I'm going to drag it up. Wade's exactly right. If, if it's a cluttered model, it's a model with lots of things in it, it could be really confusing. Like, where did it go? And if, if that happens, you can explore it from over here and double click on it in this, in this um, pane over here. Um, uh, in this uh, window here, projects window, you could go and find it, and and you can link to it there if you want to, and drag it into place. Um, okay, so we we copied that, we created that parameter to capture GIS location for things that we will be situating within the broader landscape, which we're not going to draw directly from a GIS database. I put it into community place. I put it into home, excuse me, home. I put it into workplace. 
but not into school or person. Persons are going to direct their own destiny. They will be autonomous and they'll be located initially at the location of their home. Um, uh, schools will be drawn from GIS database. Okay, so we got some preliminary stuff done. Now the real action starts with GIS. We've laid the groundwork and now we will reap the benefits. We have sown and now we will reap. Okay, so if you go to Maine, double click on Maine, we're going to add in a defining element for GIS. Okay, so we're gonna go to the palette and we will go where no person has gone before. Well, okay, <laughs> none of you, none, none of the students here have gone before, probably. So we're gonna go to palette and we're gonna the space markup. It's located just above analysis and just below presentation. And it's located two below the Da Vinci and logo of the agent. So it's this guy here, this, this markup. Now, this markup is used for many purposes. Amongst other things, it's used for, for describing routes within buildings. Like you could have a map of this building and show where people go for the fire, fire escape and, and can move around, et cetera. But wait, another. Uh, wait, if we could make sure you send that list. Um, to overcome skepticism. Um, so we're going to go here, and you see over in the GIS area, there's something called GIS map. What's that? Greg. Okay. Greg and Raouf, if you could. Thank you. Okay. Um, or or just add them to it. It's a Google Sheet. Yeah. If you know their, if you can get their their uh, information, Google account. So GIS map, I'd like you to drag it in and, and it will form a GIS map. Now TAs, I need TA strength. I need strength in numbers here, okay? Okay. Like lions arise from your slumber. So mighty in form, so great in number. Shake off your your fatigue like morning dew, because you are many and they are few. That may have been Shelley. Um, okay, so we just drag this, and uh, we have a map now. Okay, um, this is the GIS map we've drawn in. Okay, okay. Yeah, Tony is a new TA. Yeah. Okay. So this GIS map, we've dragged it on. And I'd like you to, once you've sized it appropriately, I'd like you to double click on it. Okay. Maybe I'll maybe I'll leave it within those bounds there, but I'll, I'm gonna double click on it. And when you double click on it, you should see on the upper left a search box do you see that yeah. okay i would like you to go and click in that search box okay and i'd like you to select when you do so select region now there i was told time was that there were some difference mac mac differences from others and i i don't know if you observed this but um uh, those working in the room should all see something directly like this. Maybe on a Mac, it's, it looks slightly different. I'm not sure. But you're going to select region, and you're going to enter Saskatoon. Now, if you want to be fully specific, you could enter Saskatoon, comma, Saskatchewan. But as our former pr premier said here, Saskatchewan is the easiest province to draw and the hardest to spell. And so I'm not gonna ask our international colleagues to type Saskatchewan, but uh, instead you can do Saskatoon. Um, okay, that should be manageable. 
And I'd like you to press here this, um, you, you can press enter or you can press this search button. And if you do so, you should see down at the bottom a set of search results. Do you see that? Okay. So notice we search for a region. And you'll notice observant students may notice that there's a, I, I'm not saying don't click on it. No, no. Um, there's a there's a little circle around our profit, around our city there, our fair city. Okay, now this is important. At the bottom, please grab a TA if you need. I'm going to right click on this at the bottom, and I am going to use the first of these convert to GIS point slash regions. Okay. Okay. Do you see that? Okay. I'm going to do that. I did it. Now, if it's not immediately obvious that it's happened, but if you right click on it again, you should see if it's grayed out. And, and that indicates it it's already accomplished it. It knows where Saskatoon is, which is more perhaps than you can be said about most, most people in the US. Um, okay, so, so ladies and gentlemen, we just created Saskatoon. And, and I mean that, that title, Saskatoon, that name Saskatoon is a known quantity. It's good to be on the map, isn't it? Okay, um, good. Uh, so, um, uh, right. Now, one thing I will say is um, this searching system is a bit finicky and there's some hidden rules that are not obvious when you first use it. Um, for example, if anyone from Eastern Australia had been searching, you'll notice that Australia is, the Eastern side of Australia right now, as it's shown on the map, is occluded, meaning it's, it's cut off, right? Um, it's hit because of this, um, this boundary. And uh, if you are searching any area which is off the map, you're probably gonna wanna um, go and if you double click on the map, you can move it around until that area is visible. We want this area to be visible. So I'm going to, I double clicked on the map and now I'm going to zoom in and I want to zoom in to see this, okay? Um, now you can zoom in in one of two ways. If you are, if you have recourse to a mouse, like said, um, you can zoom in. Uh, with it, with the with this uh, with this little wheel, okay, and and uh, just you may have to kind of move this around, and and you can zoom in that way. Otherwise, you can use a plus key and zoom in with the plus key, meaning you know make sure it's a plus. You know, uh, hold down the uh, uh, the the shift and and do plus to to make sure it's. Uh, it's appropriately um, appropriately uh, uh, yeah so that it's that it's make it as a plus not as a equals okay so I'm zooming in now the the part of the art here is whoa you, you gotta you gotta be a little bit sensitive to the fact that if you click outside the area it will drag this whole it may drag the whole thing. Like if you click outside here, then then if you click on this, it drags it. You have to double click on it to get back into the mode of navigating on the map. But I'm gonna move it so that our fair city is fully visible and not and doesn't stretch outside of the map that's visible. Okay, so I'm, I'm situating it so our city is visible and fully visible. Okay. Okay. There we are. A thing of beauty. Is it not? Indeed. Um, okay. Now, um, what I'm going to do next is, is also a little bit tricky. First of all, anyone need TA help in navigating around here? You'll notice I had to 
And showing you this uh, is helpful for beginners who are interested in getting going on GIS because it's a bit finicky. But again, a lot of what I've been showing is uh, you have to double click on the map to enter this mode of interacting with it. And it matters what showing you want to show the area you want to search. So the area that you want to search needs to be showing. And you're going to use this box up in the upper left, this text box to search for things. And you're going to search for either points or regions variously. This last one, we search for a what? We search for a region or a point. Anyone remember? It, no, the last one was actually a region. That's why it's selected. That's why this big area is selected, Saskatoon. Hmm? Okay. Next, we are going to search for a point. Okay? So if, if you left this and you're futzing around, double click on it and go back to this and search for a point. And what we're going to search for is school. Okay. Capital S C H O O L. Mm -hmm. School. Okay. Um, and I'm going to search, and it's searching within this region that's visible. And you see it, we'll find a bunch of schools. Do you see that? Okay. Um, uh, Maybe someone could help Saab had to step up for a minute. If someone could get him up to speed here, that would be great. Okay. Okay. So we're going to take the first set of those schools. We're going to go and click down in this area below. Not double click, just click. And I'm going to select the first six of them, okay? down to Newtana Collegiate. So that's Bedford Road, Bishop James Mahoney, Evan Hardy, Walter Murray, Mount Royal, and Newtana, okay? For those not from Canada, um, collegiate institutions in Canada are high schools, okay? Um, okay, so I went down there in this search and I selected the first six, okay? Now, we're going to do something with these first six, but I want, want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Are people feeling equipped for, for this? Equipped or not? Yes. Okay. So next, I want to right-click on these. And this time, I want to do something different. I want to create agents at the selected elements. Okay. Okay. So these things that I am selecting, I'm going to create as agents. And what sort of agent do you think they will be? School. school. Yeah, they're going to be schools. So these will be my schools in the model. Okay? How did I do that? I selected these. I right-clicked. I... I went and I said, create agents at, at selected elements. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. But I selected school and I clicked there and it, it created them as schools. So if you're not sure if you've done it, if you look to the left of the map, you will see a set of what? Schools. Good. Those are your schools. Those, ladies and gentlemen, are your school. Those are ours. Okay. Are we okay with this? Okay. Now, clearly, we could have searched for a lot of other things. There's hospitals there, clinics there, stores there, you know, um, uh, long-term care facilities there, all sorts of things in the GIS data that we could have searched for um, in the OpenStreetMaps database. And we could create them as agents. Note that pattern. We have agents in the model, types of agents. One of them is school. And here we are grounding the information on those schools by what's in the GIS database. Do you see a pattern there? Okay. Okay. Now, having so done that, having done so, we are going to now 
do something with those schools outside of the map. We're basically done with the map interacting with this map interactively in this form. What I've just gone through is the most tricky user interface part of the AnyLog interface to, to GIS information. What we're going to do from now on, we'll be interacting with GIS information in loads of ways, but we won't be doing it by clicking on the map and dragging around and searching. What we've seen is two key steps for doing that, for finding an area of interest, the region, that's what we search for, for Saskatoon is a region, and then we went and we searched for the particular resources of interest within that region and created them as agents. Okay. okay, we're leaving that behind, but we're still staying with GIS functionality, and we're going to enable that. So if we click over here, we see our schools. Now, the model already had schools in it. Do you, do you remember that? We had a we had a we had a population of schools. Does anyone see it there? Yeah, it's 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 up actually just to the left of the things we created. So we don't we don't need that anymore. We're gonna create a replacement for this based on these particular schools. We don't need synthetic schools anymore. We don't need schools that we produce out of thin air. We're gonna use these ones that are grounded, that are GIS informed schools, that are real location. Okay. So we're gonna take this population and we're gonna do something very important to it. We're going to do something of great importance for agent-based modeling. We're gonna delete it, <laughs> okay? Uh, so we're gonna write, we're gonna, I, I right-clicked on it and I said delete, or you can press the control X, or you could, you could go and you could do edit, delete, or whatever. But I just deleted it, okay? Now, it was called, what did I just delete? It was called what? School. So I'm going to call something else schools. It's a collection of these guys. So let me show you how you do this. Yes, uh, Saab? So as you deleted the school, it had a formula associated with that. It did? For the anthropology and the transmission. Uh, great, great, great uh, question. So these, so that, like air quality, um, information for that school um that is part of the theory of schoolhood the theory of being you know being a school that is still present the the notion of being a school here is is still present in the model so we still have schoolness in the model it, you know this this is still in the model the notion of a school what is no longer there is the population of them that we created earlier. Instead, we're going to have the population created from the GIS data. And each of those things from the GIS data, if we go back to each of them, these are each a school. So each of them has sub and air quality. Each of them has uh, some position. Each of them has an appearance, in fact you know, according to what we, we've done. Um, it's just we're replacing this population of ones we just created of schools with, with these ones, each of which is a school as we've defined it for the model. I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's go take advantage of these things. We're going to select them. Select them like that. Hmm. I'm going to select them. They're all selected, all six. And next, I am going to go right click on these and I'm going to do create collection. Okay. Now, like what Wade said earlier, when this happens, you sometimes have to visually see, like, where did it create it? And it, it actually created it here. If you don't see where it created, if you're wondering, like, what, where is it? I, I don't see it anywhere. You can go over to main, and if you open it up and you look, there's an area now called collections, and you can go, double click on it, and it will tell you where it is. Mm -hmm. Or another key feature of any logic, you could do control F, which is what in Mac? Yeah. 
Command F, and you could say, you know, a collection, and, and you could search for it and find it that way. Anyway, here's this collection. It's called right now collection, which is rather nondescript. Um, it's a somewhat blunt term, not, not very differentiating. So we're going to call it, guess what I'm going to call it? Schools. Schools. You got it. You got it. So we replaced this old collection that was a population, technically uh, called schools, and we replaced it with this collection of these. Now, now there's, there's a little bit of subtlety here. This is not just any old run-of-the-mill population anymore. It's this collection of of schools which have are imbued with GIS information and knows all about their place on the GIS map and that sort of stuff. It knows how to get to them, all that sort of goodies. They are imbued with GIS information. And we will use that information to good effect. Okay. Okay. We're we're through the trickiest part of this. And we're through a large part of this um, need. We're out of the woods. Who needs help? How about online? Here we have TAs, so mighty in form, so great in number. But online, I know, I know it's lonely. Um, so, <laughs> uh, can can we help? Here, there's a Zoom master, Harriet, who is, is waiting to help. Anyone need help online? Anyone have questions online? Anyone have questions in the room before we finish this? We're much of the way done now. Okay, good, 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 good. Great to hear it, uh, Yunfen, and great to hear it, Rachel. Excellent. Okay. By the way, I when I teach this, I sometimes tell students who have laptops, bring your mouse for today so that they can do this. Because it's it, with a mouse, you, you can zoom in a little bit easier. And but you can do it with the plus and minus keys too. Um okay. So so we're a lot of the way done. We're past the trickiest part, but we've got to finish um finish the thought. Okay. So we've got a couple things to kind of tidy up the model to use geographic information. And for anyone interested in getting going with geographic information, what I'm going to be doing going forward is also relevant. You'll notice I'm going to add, I've already added bits of information to each agent. Does anyone remember what it is? Bits of information to each of the agent classes. I added, remember that? Location. Remember that? It was a point. For, except for the ones we found directly through the GIS database. We know all their location built in. But the others have location. We even said what that location is. It's That location within each of these is a what? It's a parameter. That's darn right it is. Okay. Okay. So where are the values? Where are the assumptions for parameters? If, if a parameter is in an agent, where is where is the information about that provided? The information for the values to assume for that parameter in the model. It's provided in by this is gonna really hurt. It's, it's provided in the population. It's provided in the population, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen it many times. The population tells the characteristics of its population. It's, it's, for example, it's demographics. So let's go to each of these populations, which has a location. So let's go to homes. And you'll notice right now, what does it say for location for the homes? Nothing. So we have to remedy that. May we do so? Hearing no objections. Okay, so we're going to go to this location field in the population. Again, anyone wanting to get you started with any logic GIS should notice you'll be going through a similar thing. Even though this is a model, even though we created the notion of a home yesterday, 
What you will have to do is do something very similar. They'll need a location parameter. If you build it up from scratch, you put in a location parameter for it's a point. And, and here in the population of these things, we will put in a location. And here's the trick. Wait, another blank. Um, so this is what I'm going to specify. The location will be, you notice there's this little light bulb and it says, Use index and index. It should actually mention that there is. Um, uh, well, okay. So um, I'm going to choose. It's going to be here for location. Do Saskatoon or this dot Saskatoon. You could do either one. How does it know about Saskatoon? Oh, look at that. It's not auto completed. Okay, there it is. It auto completed it. Yeah. Alternatively, you can just leave out the this if you prefer. How does it know about Saskatoon? It, we found it earlier. We found it as a region. Remember that? And it's called Saskatoon. I told you, it knows what Saskatoon is now. This is evidence of that. It knows what Saskatoon is. Saskatoon is actually a... Uh, a, a, a sort of area it's aware of, okay? It's named Saskatoon, okay? If we had found other regions, if we had found Regina, or we had found Calgary, or Edmonton, or we had found, you know, uh, Sacramento, or whatever, it will be there too. Okay, so this dot Saskatoon, and then I'm going to do dot random point inside. Begin paren and paren. Oops, sorry. Oh, random point inside. Begin paren and paren. Just like this. Random point inside. I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay. So again, it's for the location parameter for each of the homes. Now, it. Am I going to do that for schools? No, because the schools are actually, they know where they are. I don't, I don't have to tell them where they are. They, they know exactly where they are. But I do have to do it for homes. What other things do I have to do it for? Workplaces. Workplaces, I will. Now, we have to do the same thing there. Time to make the donuts. Paste it in. I copied and pasted. Or you could type it again if you want to. Um, I copied it and pasted it directly. But you could do this dot Saskatoon, random point inside, same code. I'm just finding them randomly inside of it. Of course, if I if if I wanted to represent big employers in Saskatoon and so on, I could I could uh find those just like I did schools and have them as agents, right? And, and so there'd be a set of workplaces that I found from the GIS map that I created from the GIS map. That would also be fun. You can even have some random ones, some known ones. That's also possible, although I won't get into it. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to do it for the community places. I'm not going to do it for people because people will people will be keeping track. We'll be routing them from here, hither, and yon, and one from one place to another. We'll be telling them, go there, this place, other that place. They don't have a just a, a single location. And we've actually, we're going to tell them to start where their home is. So, so we don't have to give them a special location. I'm trying to teach principles for those getting started in any logic GIS here as well. So homes, workplaces, and, and community places, anywhere where I'm not loading it directly from the GIS um, I'm going to put this, just situate it randomly. Again, if you wanted to go extra detail, if you wanted the community places to be drawn from sets of known community locations, yeah, you could go for it. It's the same basic thing we did for schools. Just just go it for school for, for quickness, okay? Okay, next, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're getting... Getting close, but there's a little bit more we have to do for each of these in turn again. So we started with homes. We have their location, but if we set their initial location, no. You notice that we set we we said 
for the location, but we didn't do anything to make it happen, to effectuate it. We didn't do anything to that would realize it, that would in fact indeed make that their location. Just like that first day, we, do you remember we created a population size and we we had an thing called population size and we said it was a thousand, but but it really didn't have played the role of population size. It didn't effectuate it, it didn't realize it unless we said in the population, make the population be given by that parameter. Similarly, this location is just a name right now. We have to say, hey, make that their location. I'm going to show you where. So I'm, I'm clicking on homes and go down to initial location and place them at the location given by that thing called location, okay? And to do this, so the location of each home will be given by this location. Let me show you how you do that. So make sure it says initial location in the latitude, longitude. And it's saying, what latitude and longitude should I use? Zero? Uh, no, you don't want to do that. That's off the coast of West Africa. Off of Nigeria, I think. Um, so you want to do self dot location dot get latitude like that. And, and we're going to do it similarly with longitude. But just for quickness, I'm going to copy this, this text, and I'm going to put it in each of the others. So I, I did it for homes. And before I fill in the other one, I'm going to put it for workplaces because it's the same thing, exactly the same text. Next thing. Exactly the same text. It's like chopping chopping green onions or something. It's just like, bup, 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 bup. we're going to put it in each of the latitudes. Okay, great. Next, we're going to do for homes, the longitude. Do you want to guess what that one is? What would I type? Yeah, exactly. Mutatis mutandus. Okay, copy it. You know, you, I, I'm doing Control C or on Mac, it's I think Command C. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's show you. Sorry. The zoom. Uh, uh, over here. Sure. Sure. Um, so make it uh, like this. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I did long, longitude here, get longitude, and sorry, I should have put it in the chat. This is for the longitude, and we're going to do it, same thing, exactly for longitude for the workplaces, same thing for community places. Now, as Wade said, you know, um, my my students over time acquire virtuosity. And there's ways you can do all of this with greater finesse by saying, look, all of homes and workplaces, community places are all places. And we could have any place as a location. We could we could reduce the amount of sort of repeated cruft like this, but to keep it simple, um, we have some repetition. And just like learning the multiplication table, sometimes repetition has 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 a place. Okay. So so we completed that thought. Now um we're we're getting close to being done here. We got these locations, we're setting places in this, etc. That's great. And I suspect if we ran it, we would see places located in the correct area, but we haven't quite finished it, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is, is just work with you to finish it. So the first thing I'd like to do is to go to each 
So do you remember where, so we've set the initial locations. Do you remember where in the model we told people, go here, go there? Where was that in the model? Where did that live that we told? So we set up all the, we've already set up all the locations, the school, the workplace, the homes, the community places. That's all done. All the ones that are fixed are all the ones that are defined locations, fixed locations, constant locations are done. So we, we, we've gone a long way. But now we have to deal with mobility. Now we have to deal with movement. Where in the model do we define mobility? Where is mobility captured in the model? Person. It's in person. And where in person? Is it in their asthma state chart? It's in their mobility state chart. Yeah, that's right. So it's in their mobility state chart. Do you remember this? We had these move to things. Do you remember that? Well, guess what? Move to still applies in GIS. The only thing is now we have this pesky notation, this pesky location thing. So wherever we said move to X, we now have to say move to X dot location. Okay. If, except for schools, which just know where they are. Okay. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, um, Let's go to the mobility state chart in person. When people head to work, we're going to need to say workplace dot location. Not, not just move to workplace. That's for this headed to work. Uh, sorry, Nona. I'll, I'll enlarge it. So heading to work, we now go workplace location. For school, do we have to do dot location? No, because there, it knows where it is. It doesn't, we didn't have to tell it there's a location. So we need to do it for this one, that move to. We need to do it for this one going to a community place. And instead of being community place being visited, we need what? D dot what? Location. Yes, thank you, Harriet. Awesome. Location. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Rachel. Awesome. Okay, dot location. Uh, we do need for home. We're not done yet. Not, not quite out of the woods yet. We need it for home over here. Boom. Okay, um, in transit to home, we need it move to home what? Dot location. That's it. I don't I don't think there was another one up up. Oh, yeah, there is one other place we have to we have to go. Um, yes, there's there's I think um, yes, I think that's correct. I think there's one other place that to start them. Okay, so we've just finished this up. Excellent. Um, we're getting close to being done. I mean, very, very close. We're on the cusp of it. But do you remember with the human population, we, we need an initial location for it. Mm -hmm. um, and for the initial location, for the human population, where is the person going to be? They're going to be at their home. So I'm back to Maine. I went to population. And now it gives me these different choices because it knows I'm in a GIS environment. And so I used to have something that said in this certain location, like an X and Y. And now it is this choice like, okay, latitude, longitude, or what? Um, so let's go. Let's do this latitude, longitude thing. So tell me, what is my, if I want them to be at their home, where is their latitude? It's the same as their what? Oh, home's latitude. Okay. How do I say their home's latitude? Well, self.home is what where their home is. You only use self when they're creating things in these 
for the most, it, it's almost never used in any logic except in this like place we're about to create an agent and how do you refer to the agent is about to be created? So self.home. How would I find out the latitude of that home? Dot location. And then what? Dot get, get latitude, right? Get latitude. And what for their launch? What for their longitude? Yeah, except excellent, excellent, excellent. Longitude. There we are. So again, this would mean like, hey, me, my home's location from that get the latitude. My home's location get the longitude. Do we need a semicolon here? No, we're just determining a value. We're just getting a value. It's like a formula. It's giving us a value. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's make sure this builds. And there's one more thing that I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do. Okay, mine. Uh oh. Okay, okay. Mine is again in the state where it's not, where it's not complaining. Uh, Wade, it's it's not saying build completed successfully anymore. Um, so that that looks like fun. Uh, I'm gonna try running it. And yeah. Um, actually, I'm going to. I'm going to save this as version, well, I called it version seven, so that, that should be fine. I'm going to post this quickly. Let's just see see if it's a happy camper, okay? No? Okay, here we go. Now, I haven't set the person's speed yet, and we want to do that, because right now they are, they're not necessarily moving at a meaningful speed, as we'll see. Okay, when will they be going? Does anyone remember? Okay, now, why 15 hours? 15 hours is the witching hour. What, what's going on at 15 hours? That's going to be, what's that? <laughs> yeah. so, so, so actually what's going on is that it's calculating. You notice this little blinking thing down here? Well, it, it blinks. It, trust me, it blinks. Um, just like the screen, um, it's it 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 blinks sometimes. We're probably all hitting the servers at the same time. There we go. Okay, there they go. You'll notice they're going along rows. Does anyone notice this? Look at that. They're, yeah. They went under Circle Drive there. Okay, they're moving around. They're look. These ones routing to Circle Drive. They went to that factory in Stonebridge. Um, uh, okay, so. So there they go. Okay, this one's going on Circle Drive across, um, passing, pressing, crossing. Um, this one went pressing, <laughs> crossing after after school or after work. Um, so these are for for those not initiated with the wonders of our fair city. These these are um, meaningful locations, uh, and we have people moving around. But but they're all moving around at an awfully stately pace. Um, and if we go look at their, um, you know, the, the the time they're taking, it's it's awfully long. Here, here's a long one, Escavon Road. Um, and uh, uh, we need to adjust the speed assumptions because they're spending uh, an awful long time walking in minus 30 degree weather, <laughs> which, which, you know, it's not entirely implausible, but um, uh, yeah, let's, let's not make it the entire population. Okay, so, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to go to the population of people and we're going to set their movement assumptions, their dimensions and movement here, okay? Okay. And I'm going to set it to change their initial speed. Right now, it's about 0.5 meters per second, which is a walking speed. That's not unreasonable, but it's slow for people's commute along Juan Escavin Road or, or over on Circle Drive. So we're going to change this. Um, and we're going to change it to nine meters per 
second, okay? Which is, for those in Canada, it's about 32 kilometers an hour. For those in the US, it's about 20 miles per hour, okay? Nine meters per second, okay? So we'll make that the speed. Now, um, we will now run this. So, sorry, build it first, and now we will run it, okay? And what would we expect to see now? They'll move faster, they'll move faster. Now, I, I wanna draw attention to something here. You notice I'm running this, and, and this, this relates to this performance issue. Um, so up to 15 hours is fine. And now it's quicker, do you see that? So the first time it took a while, it was figuring out the routes from all their homes to all the places they have to go to, schools, workplaces, but now it figured it out, it cached it. It kept, it kept that information from earlier. It, it had figured out how do I get from A to B for lots of A's and lots of B's, all these pairs. And now it could just use that information and say, oh, these people go along Circle Drive to Confederation Drive and, and they get off to this exit on Circle Drive and they, they go into, you know, Confederation Shopping Center, or, or what? Well, it's actually just a location that happens to be there by chance. And they're routed around. Um, now, it's also worth noting here um, that if we look at this um, and we go to the characteristics of the map here, I'm going to go back to Maine while that's still, still running here. Um, if we were to go and we were to click on the map, what well, one thing we would see is that under the routing area, it says like, okay, what road type should I be considering? Car, rail, bike, or foot? Should I be should I be considering car routes, rail routes, bike routes, or or routes that are easily traversed on foot? It actually has that information, so it might know that you know the. Circle Drive Bridge has a walkway on red, up, you know, on, on the one near Preston Crossing. And this other railway bridge has a footpath, but this other bridge doesn't. The sort of center of Sydney Buckwall Bridge doesn't, or whatever. Um, uh, there's also some choices for where, what routing server you use, and, and uh, sort of some choices for um, some indication of. of you know, do I prefer the shortest route or the fastest route? Um, now, uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of this, but I will say that um, uh, that with respect to the different routes, uh, Wade and I were conversing last night, and uh, our understanding from that conversation, Wade, you could correct me if I'm wrong, if you've had a chance to look into it more, but it is possible to have some agents who might be in cars, some who would be on foot, some who would be on bike, and they, that they could be each routed according to their modality of transportation, right? Um, in which case you might have different routing uh, rules, essentially for different classes of agent according to their modes of transportation. And Wade pointed me to something called a GIS route, I guess, uh, um, route provider, routing provider. Um, and you can see it says supports four network types, car, rail, bike, and foot. Um, uh, and, and I, I'm, I'm not uh, equipped to show this uh, in this session, but you know, if there were strong student interest, we could probably um, separately give you a version of this model, which has uh, each of those types for those modalities. Okay, um, so, so we now have a, a genuine geographically situated model of movement, 
through outdoor spaces to indoor spaces with differing air quality, assumed indoors and outdoors at different temperature, which contributes to different burden of asthma, um, different asthma burden here um, that triggers different occurrences. And we have some reporting here of where people are encountering triggering of their asthmatic attacks, the triggering of their bouts of asthma. Um, we've come a long way. I mean, this is, uh, you've had genuine exposure to the details of GIS um, here. Um, now, to complete your exposure to one additional component of of any logic, I'm tempted to show you one final, actually two final things that might be useful. But um, I'm conscious of the fact that we're also at at ten fifteen here, and soon we'll be going for for two hours. So why don't we take a five minute break, and uh, we'll come back, and uh, I'll take a look at the rest of the morning and figure out if we have time for that probably about 10, 15 minutes, or if uh, we need to get on to sensitivity analysis and calibration. Okay, so let's come back in five minutes here. Thank you.